Hi there. Today we're going to discuss the installation of your Your Home Air Assist Kit for your diode laser. When you open the box, you will find a power supply. You will find either a 33 millimeter clamp or a 40 millimeter clamp along with the air assist nozzle tube. The 40 millimeter clamp is for the 80 watt module. The 33 millimeter clamp is for all other diode modules. You'll also have a soft case inside of which we will find the air pump itself. You have an adjustable power uh, switch, the power connection, and your air outlet connection. You'll have a quarter inch length of tubing. You will have an adapter fitting to go from the quarter inch tube down to the eighth inch tube and you will have a coil of tubing. For the basics of assembly of the air system, this is a push to connect fitting. You simply take the quarter inch tubing, press it into the fitting, and that locks it in place. You can depress this ring right here to uh, loosen it if you need to. On the back of the pump, simply take the quarter inch tubing and press it over the barbed fitting. To install the eighth inch tubing, you simply press it into the end of the fitting and it will lock in place. At the nozzle end, you simply take the tubing and slide it over the top of the tubing. For most applications, this will be tight enough to maintain the tubing connection. In the event it is loose, you can take one of the small included cable ties, wrap it around there and that will be enough of a friction fit to keep the tube from pulling off in normal operation. This tubing is small enough. If you have the drag chains, you'll be able to route it through the drag chains as well to provide you with better clearance and keep it out of the way. Now I'm going to move on and we're going to show how to install the nozzles on each of the diodes. For nozzle installation on the 80 watt diode, you'll have your 80 watt module I have it removed from the machine right now for convenience. The application will apply whether it's attached to a machine or not. On the clamp itself, you've got a thumb screw here on the side. That will attach it and tighten it to the module heat sink. You have another thumb screw right here that will adjust the height of the tube. So on your laser module, you'll simply place the clamp against the face of the heat sink and tighten the thumb screw accordingly. That will tighten it to the module and hold it firmly in place. I currently have it mounted right on the front of the laser. You would use that installation if you were installing this on a 6550 where the back side of the laser is placed up against the mounting plate. If you were using this on one of the CNC machines, you could mount this to the side if you wanted. The height of the laser and nozzle assembly. For the 80 watt laser, we have this adapter. We know that our laser height is going to be approximately that far off of the work surface. So what we're going to want to do is adjust the height of that tube to where it is just above the work surface. This will provide us the best benefit keeping the kerf of the laser clear and the beam free from smoke. You will want to ensure that the laser and nozzle are aligned. You have a little bit of adjustment just by loosening that screw and tightening it down accordingly. Once you have it installed, this laser is now ready to go into operation. You connect your air assist tubing and start burning. For the smaller laser modules, which use the 33 millimeter heatsink, I have an example here showing the 15 watt laser. Same principle. We mount our bracket on the front of the laser or on the side, whichever you prefer. And then we're going to adjust our height accordingly. Now, for the 15 and 40 watt lasers, 
we know that we want to have our working height approximately 20 millimeters above the work surface. So we can adjust that accordingly to keep our nozzle just above the work surface and tighten that down accordingly. Again, you want to ensure that you are aligned straight with the, the laser output aperture as well. You can adjust that accordingly. One advantage to this air assist system over our previous model is this one is also compatible with the three and a half and five and a half watt lasers. Since the nozzle height is adjustable, you can simply attach it to the three and a half or five and a half watt laser in much the same way. But now we know that we need to have a working height of approximately 45 millimeters above our work surface. So we measure accordingly and set our height. It would probably be advisable to go ahead and set your height once you have the laser in place and you can determine where your work surface is accordingly. I'll now show an example of this installed on both the 6550 and on one of our CNC machines. Okay. So, I've got one of our 6550 machines here with a 15 watt laser installed on it. I've mocked up as if we were getting ready to engrave on this piece of wood, and I have set my height appropriately with our 20 millimeter spacer. To install our air assist nozzle, we simply mount the bracket across the front of the laser, set our height accordingly, and tighten our thumb screw. We do have adjustability with that front thumb screw if needed. Installation for the 80 watt laser on the 6550 would be the same basic arrangement, just with the higher focal distance spacer that is needed. Now I'm going to move on to our CNC machines so you can see how this air assist nozzle will fit with those machines as well. Now, I have zoomed in a little bit so we can see this a little clearer. This is installing the air assist on a laser that's installed in either the 3018 Pro or if you have expanded yours to a 3036 Pro, it will use the same tool carrier. Again, you can see that I have mocked up a piece of wood as if we were going to be engraving on it. I have set my height so I can pull my spacer out of there. We have to operate a little bit differently for this one. We do have to turn the nozzle so that it is off to one side. So what we're going to do is simply slide that nozzle right down through there. And right now we have it a little too low, so I'll go ahead and loosen this so that it's up out of our way and then retighten. I can tighten my thumb screw holding the clamp to the top of the laser. And now I can simply loosen this screw, set the appropriate height for my air assist nozzle, and tighten that screw. Again, you now connect your air tubing and you're ready to burn. You do want to make sure that your nozzle is aimed centered on the laser kerf. You may need to adjust slightly to get it lined up perfectly. For installing the laser with air assist on your mandrill, it's very much like the silverback installation since the mounts are very similar. You're going to need your laser, in this case I'm using the 40 watt, and I do have the air assist nozzle attached to it. As you can see I mounted it on the side, this is entirely personal preference. You'll also need the adapter ring that holds the laser in place to the mandrel's spindle mount. Because of the length of this laser and where the nozzle ends up at, one thing I'm going to do a little bit differently is connect the airline up first, just to give us a little more room. So what I'm going to do is actually mount this laser from the underside to allow me to get it closer to the work surface. So I'm going to take the ring with the lip on it facing down. I'm going to slide it over the top of the laser. I've already routed 
my air line through the drag chain and I'm going to feed that down through the spindle holder so that I can attach it onto the air assist nozzle. Now we simply feed that right up through the middle of the spindle holder, get it into the position that we want, and carefully tighten down the clamp screws on the spindle holder. Remember you want to go about a quarter turn on each of these, alternating back and forth. That will prevent any galling or stripping of the threads in the tool holder housing. As you tighten it down, you'll feel the tension as it clamps down and holds the laser in place. For a little bit of additional leverage as you get closer to getting it tight, you can use the other longer arm of the Allen, skirt, Allen wrench. Again, we want to go about a quarter turn at a time so that we don't strain anything and damage those threads. Once we're in place, we can now adjust the laser height as needed. I had this all the way to the top so we had more room to work. But now we can bring it down right to where our work surface is I've already set my nozzle as in the earlier part of the video. You can now hook your air pump up and you're ready to start cutting or engraving with your laser equipped mandrill. When installing the diode laser on the Silverback, one of the issues that we do run into is that the height, even with the Z-axis at its lowest position, is too far away from the material. One trick that will help get that installed a little bit easier and give you a little more flexibility is to kind of install it with the ring upside down. What I would suggest is that you set up your nozzle with the bracket at the bottom of the heatsink and set your height accordingly, either to our 15 millimeter spacer for the smaller lasers or with the larger spacer for the 80 watt laser. Again, I do have the bracket mounted here at the bottom of the heat sink for the greatest clearance. If you bought your 80 watt laser to use with the silver back, you were included with this ring. Take this ring and with the lip on it facing down, slide it over the top of the laser and then we will actually install the laser from the bottom of the tool holder so that that ring is held in place. And now you can tighten your clamping screws carefully. You want to go about a quarter turn on each one at a time. And that will hold your laser and you can actually adjust the height accordingly if you wanted to drop it down a little closer to get it closer to your workpiece. You may not be able to get it all the way down there, but you can get a lot closer so that you don't have to build everything back up. The same is true for the smaller lasers, where I've already set that height on the nozzle. We've got our adapter ring for those lasers that's included with the silver back itself. Same thing, slip it over the laser with the ring lip to the bottom, place it in the holder, tighten your screws accordingly, and you can adjust your laser height. You'll probably want to make sure your tubing is connected before you start putting all this in place, just for convenience. As always, if you have any questions about any of our products, or if you need additional guidance, please email us at support at yourahome.com or you can check out our online knowledge base at my.yourahome.com. Thank you and enjoy your laser. Jungle.